Boruto's Limitless Rasengan, otherwise known as Uzuiko, is one of the most broken jutsus in the entire history of the franchise. Mind you, this is a universe that possesses abilities that allows you to destroy time spaces, create life from pure energy, and even shape reality itself to match your desires. So it's safe to say that this new Rasengan is in great company, and I'm here to explain why. You see, this Rasengan was first revealed in Chapter 2 of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. Back then we didn't know much about it, which means that we had to make assumptions as to how it actually functions based on the established lore in the series. This however is no longer necessary because the recent chapter further went on to clarify the true nature of the ability, which is even crazier than we initially believed. You see, this Rasengan doesn't use chakra as we know it, and neither does it use nature energy. In fact, it doesn't use any type of energy that was previously established in the story. This is something new entirely. For this to make sense, let's go to page 11 of chapter 12, where Boto goes on to state that Usihiko uses the energy of centrifugal force that accompanies a planet's rotation and orbit. He then goes on to state that he calls it a planet's chakra, but it's really just a new Rasengan that utilizes that energy. Now this might be a bit confusing, so let's break it down a bit. So the key detail to take from this is Borta saying that he calls it the planet's chakra, but what it actually utilizes is the energy of centrifugal force. Now this is very important because everyone thought that Uzuhiko uses nature energy, since Borta is using the energy of the planet. But this was later debunked by the official Borta database, which listed the ability as ninjutsu instead of senjutsu. It even went as far as saying that Borta refers to the planetary energy used for Uzuhiko as the planet's chakra, but this is not the same as nature energy used by ninjas such as Naruto and Mitsuki when they enter sage mode, which is obviously a response to the crazy theories about Boruto secretly having sage mode. So if the ability is using the planet's chakra, but that chakra is not the same as nature energy which the planet generates, what energy is Boruto using to power Uzuhiko? Well this takes us back to the energy of centrifugal force. So imagine you're on a merry-go-round. As it spins, you feel like you're being pushed away from the center. That is centrifugal force. It's not a real force per se, but instead a result of inertia, which is the tendency of objects to resist changes in their state of motion. This force appears because your body wants to keep moving in a straight line but the rotation of the merry-go-round pulls you into a circular path. So centrifugal force itself doesn't have energy, but objects moving in a circular path have kinetic energy due to their motion. So what this simply means is that Boruto's new Rasengan is powered by the kinetic energy the planet generates by simply rotating on its axis, which is why he mentions the planet's rotation and orbit. Now what's even crazier about this is that Boruto goes on to claim that if he doesn't hold back, he would be able to kill Hidari in one blow. That's because there's absolutely no limit to the power of Uzuhiko. This of course goes back to Boruto telling Ko that the power rushing through his body will never dissipate, just like our planet will never stop spinning. This exact logic is what makes the power of Uzuhiko limitless. Now to break it down so it makes more sense, look at it this way. Since the planet itself will never stop spinning, it will continue to generate more kinetic energy for Boruto to absorb, which then of course makes it an unlimited source of energy, which then makes the power of the Rasengan itself limitless. Now of course, you could argue that one could stop the planet from spinning, which negates all of this, but Uzuhiko would be the least of anyone's worries if that does happen. By the way, the chapter also introduces the first con of the ability, which which is that Boruto needs to take in that energy through both feet, so it has to be directly standing on the ground. This means that one could attack him and force him to remove that connection, thus preventing him from ever being able to charge that ability. Now this is very important since Boruto notes that he would need a lot of it in order to kill Hidari in one blow, which means that he needs time to charge. This means that Uzuiko can be used at different output levels based on the intent of the user, which explains why Code who Boruto wanted alive was barely damaged by the ability, while Hidari got ripped apart. Mind you, Boruto didn't even get to finish charging the ability to maximum output, yet he was able to do that amount of damage to an above Jigen level threat. By the way, this Rasengan doesn't only use the energy of the planet. In fact, it's outright stated in Boruto's database that it utilizes not only one's own chakra, but also the planet's rotation and orbit, plus the corresponding centrifugal and other forces. So the user's power level is also a factor in how powerful the ability will be. Now, this isn't the full extent of the ability because you see that Cold was able to bypass the flares of the technique and hold on to Boruto's right hand. 
This simply means that the technique itself doesn't deflect attacks nor does it protect Boruto's body from damage. Yet just a few pages later, Kodos have been trouble landing hits on Boruto. It didn't matter what he did and it didn't matter how many times he attacked, he just couldn't make contact. Ko then said to himself that Boruto's movements are way beyond simple dodging, nor is it Genjutsu or Shadow Clones. So if Boruto isn't dodging code, nor is he using Genjutsu or Shadow Clones, why isn't code able to touch him? Well, it all comes back to the Rasengan. You see, most readers didn't realize this, but even before Boruto fully landed the Rasengan, he already imparted the effects of the technique onto code. This happened on page 8 when the Rasengan started Started to coil around Code's hand, thus transferring to his entire body. Bort himself confirmed this by saying that killing you is easy. In fact, I'm already halfway there. Now this of course points to the strength of the ability at this point in time, but also to the partial effect on Code's body, because the goal at this point wasn't to kill Code, but instead to extract information on the Tentels. So Borto pretty much needed a way to disable him without killing him, and this is what he came up with. Now this of course goes back to the effects of planetary spin, one such being the Coriolis effect. This is a phenomenon that primarily affects the movements of air follicles and fluids due to the planet's rotation. It also results in the apparent deflection of moving objects like air masses, ocean currents, and even projectiles. Now before we can fully understand the Coriolis effect and why it's behind what's happening to code, we first need to understand a few fundamentals about the planet itself. Now the Earth itself is constantly rotating on its own axis, and it's doing so at very fast speeds. It might not seem that way to the people living on the planet, but there's a reason for that. You see, the Earth spins at a constant speed, which means there is no change in its rotational speed. So it doesn't decelerate or accelerate, it just has one constant motion. And due to that constant motion, we as humans move along with the planet at the same speed. So in essence, you don't perceive the planet moving because its rotational speed never changes. A good example of this would be traveling in a vehicle. Let's say it's moving at exactly 40 miles per second, which means it's traveling at a constant speed. You wouldn't feel yourself moving at 40 miles per second, and that's because you're coupled with the speed of the vehicle you're traveling in. The only time you'd notice the movement of the vehicle would be when it decelerates, which causes your body to swing forwards, or when it accelerates, which causes your body to ease backwards. This all occurs due to the change in motion. This is also why when you jump on a moving bus, you always land in the same position. This happens because there is no relative motion between you and the bus, since you're moving at the same speed as the bus itself. Now take what I just said and apply it to the planet itself. In this case, the planet would be the bus you're traveling on. So similar to how you'd be coupled to the speed of the bus, you're also coupled to the speed of the planet, thus moving at the same speeds. So that's why you don't perceive the movement of the planet as it's happening. If that ever happens, it would be the last thing you ever did. Now this embryo brings us back to code and the Coriolis effect, which actually stems from the difference in rotational speeds the planet experiences depending on the geographical location. Now there's one perfect example of the Coriolis effect that fully demonstrates why code wasn't able to land a hit on Boruto. This was done by these guys, you guys can go check them out when you're finished with this video, but they pretty much used a projectile traveling on a rotational frame to demonstrate how this works. So in this case, you can see that if you shoot a projectile at a target while pointing the barrel directly at the target, the shot will miss as the projectile curves to the right if you're in the northern hemisphere or curve to the left if you're in the southern hemisphere. So in the battle versus code, we can see that after the Rasengan coiled around his hand, he was no longer able to make contact with Boruto, even though Boruto himself wasn't dodging him. That's because code is under the effect of Coriolis, due to Boruto applying the force of planetary spin. Now the next question of course is how did Boruto do this? Well I pulled up our trusty friend ChatGTP and asked this question. If you hypothetically link someone to the planet's rotation, would they then be affected by the Coriolis effect? He then replied saying that linking someone to the planet's rotation would then mean that they're fixed in place relative to the Earth's surface and would indeed experience the Coriolis effect. In this scenario, the Coriolis effect would influence their perception and the motion of objects around them, which could then create unusual and potentially disorienting experiences. Now, this seemed to match exactly what's happening to Code and what's stated by Boruto. He said that it's a Rasengan that incorporates a planet's chakra, its rotation. The power that's rushing through Code's body will never dissipate, just like our planet will never stop spinning. And this of course is then backed up by Damon referring to the power as planetary spin. 
Now one thing to focus on is it saying that the person would be fixed in place relative to the Earth's surface, which means that the person is stationary and doesn't move with respect to the Earth's rotation. In other words, their position remains constant concerning the Earth's surface as the planet rotates. So in a sense, everything on Earth rotates with the planet as it spins on its axis. But the Coriolis effect affects the motion of objects that are not anchored to the Earth's surface and move relative to it, causing them to appear to follow a curved path due to the Earth's rotation. This is demonstrated by them throwing the ball back and forth without rotating the reference frame. And as you can see, the ball travels in a straight line. Yet when the ball is thrown while the frame is spinning, it constantly curves to the right. That is the Coriolis effect. So, since the Coriolis effect only affects objects that are not linked to the Earth's surface, it is possible that what Borta did to Cole was to remove his link to the Earth's surface and instead linked him to the Earth's rotation by of course injecting that rotational energy into his body. This would explain why every time he dashes towards Boruto, he constantly curves away from him. So in this scenario, Cold would be the nerf gun bullet that constantly curves away from its target. It will also explain why he can perceive the Earth's rotation, which then causes his vision to get distorted. And as I explained before, the reason why we don't perceive this is because we're coupled with the Earth's surface, thus moving at the same constant speed. Boruto somehow found a way to remove that connection, which causes Cold to feel the full effects of the Earth's rotation. This is also confirmed in Boruto's official database, where it stated that in addition to the damage that his standard Rasengan causes, it also destroys the target's sense of balance, thus debilitating them. Now, there is a way for Code to possibly hit Boruto even while under the effects of Uzuhiko which would be to simply aim more to the left or right rather than directly at Boruto. So it's similar to how you'd adjust for recoil when firing a gun. Now some believe that Boruto continued to dodge code by spamming Flying Thunder God, which I guess is possible, but I'm not leaning towards that right now. I guess we'll see soon enough. And if I turn out to be wrong, I guess I'll just like make an update video. So as you can see, Uzuhiko is just an overpowered ability which allows Boruto to make use of the planet's kinetic energy. This then gives him access to the limitless energy the planet generates, which can be used to destroy his opponents or inflict psychological damage. So it's pretty busted. With that said guys, that's it for the video. And by the way, if the audio quality changed at some point in the video, that's because I had to record the rest of the video in a different location. So as you guys know, ambient noises are quite different depending on where you're recording the, the audio. So it's the same mic, it might sound different, but it's because of the environment itself, why it sounds like maybe I'm a different person or maybe I'm using a different mic. But it's the same mic, it's just a different environment. So yeah guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think what I said makes sense? And if I miss anything, let me know in the comment section. And by the way guys, join the Discord. The link will be in the comments pinned and also in the description. And if you guys want to support the channel, we don't have channel memberships for some reason. So we'll have to just use Patreon. So if you guys want to join the Patreon, the link will also be in the description. With that said again guys, have a great day and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.